Learning to paint outside can be incredibly intimidating. I'm going to share with you five tips to help you get started. Tip number one is to use a viewfinder. Drawing or painting outside can be overwhelming because you have to figure out a way to capture the three-dimensional world on a two-dimensional surface. Having a viewfinder will help enormously. I use this view catcher, but you don't need to spend a lot of money. You can make your own viewfinders using scrap cardboard and cutting out a few different sizes that are the same shape as your paper or canvas. A viewfinder will help you isolate an interesting scene and will put a little frame around it to make it easier to draw. A helpful thing for beginners is to take a mat board for a picture frame and tape a clear piece of acetate on the back. Draw a line dividing it in half horizontally and another vertically. On the reverse side, you can use a water-based marker to draw only the main lines and shapes. This will help you get started. Draw the same lines and shapes on your paper. You can later add value and details. I've sped this up, but it took less than two minutes. Simplifying things into a few basic lines and shapes like this makes drawing a lot easier. When you're finished, wipe away the lines with a damp cloth and you're ready for the next time. Tip number two is to understand how the atmosphere and light waves affect the way we see things. If you want to paint really convincing landscapes, it helps to understand aerial perspective, which is also called atmospheric perspective. Objects that are far away often have a bluer or even reddish violet tint to them and are warmer and darker as they get closer. That's because when we look into the distance, we're looking through particles of water, dust, and gases, and it affects the way we see things. The distant trees and hills in this painting are bluer and paler than the warmer and brighter foreground. As an artist, you can better observe this by painting outside. It was very misty when I began to paint this scene and became slightly brighter. I painted the background more bluish and pale to give that illusion of distance. Look for this phenomenon when you paint. Here, even on a rainy autumn day, the distant hills were paler, bluer, and less defined than the warmer, darker bush that was closer. So that's how I painted it. Because blue light is scattered the most, objects tend to look bluer in the distance or redder if they're brighter, since red light scatters the least. Be a detective the next time you go outside and look for these subtle changes and put them in your paintings. Tip number three is to be selective about adding details. Beginning artists are often tempted to draw or paint everything with the same amount of detail, but that's not how the human eye perceives things. When objects are farther away, they're not only smaller, but they also have less contrast. Both of these student drawings are beautiful, but the one on the bottom is more realistic because the student has observed that the closer objects are more detailed and also darker. You can really notice this when you paint outside. Atmospheric perspective makes things that are farther away look more pale and blue, but that also means that closer objects are more detailed and darker. You can hardly see any detail in these distant hills. This middle range of trees has some contrast in details, and there's even a difference in the contrast between these two trees that are closest. The most detail is in these grasses that are right next to the viewer. You can observe this even in scenes that don't have as much distance. Look for these subtle differences and include them in your paintings. Notice them when you go out for walks. Tip number four is to look for the different layers of color in the sky. Try this. Look at the sky directly above you and point a finger at it. Notice how dark and blue it is. Now slowly move your finger down to where the sky meets the horizon and notice how much more pale the color is. This is because blue light is scattered more by the atmosphere. When there's more humidity in the air, this difference is more extreme because there's more water in the air. To create depth in your paintings, make the sky slightly darker and bluer at the top and paler along the horizon. This mimics what the eye sees and will make your paintings look more realistic. Also notice how clouds are warmer and larger at the top and smaller and cooler towards the horizon. That's because they're farther back in the atmosphere. Observing and understanding how atmospheric perspective affects the sky will improve your art. And tip number five is to sketch the main composition quickly. When you paint outside, the light is constantly changing and your time is limited, so it's important to get your whole composition down quickly. With oils, start with your darker colors and black and dark shapes first. This helps give a structure for your painting to follow. With watercolor, it's a little trickier because darks take longer to build. You can start by adding blocks of main color or you can create a quick pencil sketch. Watercolor is less forgiving, so it's important to remember to leave highlighted areas white or a very light value. You can use masking fluid to block out areas you know are going to stay light. When the darks and lights are correct, you can spend the rest of your time adding details and final touches. Plein air painting is a lot different than painting inside. Give yourself permission to play and to fail. My first plein air paintings were awful. Remind yourself that it's all a learning process and have fun with it. I believe in you. If you'd like to learn more art tips, subscribe and hit the notifications bell because YouTube probably won't recommend my longer videos unless you do. And consider checking out my Patreon. I do live streams and longer tutorials like the ones I taught my university students over there. Either way, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate your support. See you soon.